Okay. We got Simon McCorkendale, we got Heaven's Gate, we're ready to do this. What you should know is that we are recording this on the day that they announced the Oscar nominations. <laughs> so when I was... So we've just been talking about what good movies came out. I know, right? And when I was putting together my list earlier, I was sitting there like, man, for everyone who's online right now bitching like, what, this garbage got a Best Picture nomination? Here are the ten reasons why my answer to that is, fuck you. <laughs> it was... So you didn't actually see a lot this year. I mean, you did, but I saw, there I was... I saw a lot of movies this year, but it really seemed like my year was more, like, middling. Kinda, middling yeah. Middling and forgettable. Um, there was a couple standouts that were bad, but... Yeah. But... On an average year where I got to, like, whittle my list down from, like, 20 to 15 to 20 movies, I had to fight to have 10. Uh-huh. There were some... Like, when I was... Because typically every year that we do this, I send you guys, like, okay, here's the ones that I remember you giving a negative review to. And there were some, like, gaps in the yeah. episodes where, where you weren't there. And I remember there being some where I was like, well, I know he didn't care that much for this movie, but... I guess I should throw it on here. Um, yeah. So yeah, maybe is this going to be one of those lists where it's like bad movies and then ones that like you didn't really care that much for? Yeah, this year, like I'll be honest, like before we even get into it, I, I, I graded a little bit on a curve where it's, it was like, you know, the the the, the top end of the list, it's it's kind of like, eh, uh -huh. eh, eh, and then there's like a couple that were like. These are pretty bad. And then there was a couple that I completely forgot I saw that movie. And then there's a couple that are, oh, that was fucking terrible. I know there's one on your list that I completely forgot that you saw. But, like, at least it's not as bad as, like, that one year I did this list with Jake. And he didn't see much throughout that year. So, like, his ten and nine were two movies he liked. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, just kick it off at number ten. This is one that, like... I didn't even really hate this movie. Sure. I, in, in fact, parts of it, in retrospect, I still really like, but Alien Covenant. Uh-huh. What else can I say? Like, definitely not great. Mm-hmm. Like, I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I liked Prometheus a whole lot more than it. I like, yeah, I like Prometheus a lot better than Alien Covenant as well. I, I wasn't that big of a fan of Covenant either. It's, it's not on my list, but it was... Like, I was struggling, guys. It was a movie that it looked like it was trying to do two different things. Like, right. it, it wants to be a sequel to Prometheus, but at the same time, it's the studio wants there to be the xenomorphs in it hardcore and still wants it to be an yeah. alien movie. So it's these two different kinds of movies kind of fighting with each other. I've seen much worse throughout the year, but like... Oh, me too. And, and that's... It, it, this was a movie that, like, honestly, the first two thirds of it, I really enjoyed. And as soon as like the adult xenomorph shows up, sure, that's when I clocked out. That's uh, when I was like, "Oh, Ridley Scott's just phoning this shit in." <laughs> like, like, oh, we're gonna do this like fucking first person perspective. Fuck you, you lazy son of a bitch. There were two, there were two Ridley Scott movies in 2017, and one you and it's very obvious which one his heart was in. Yes. It was all the money in the world, which I thought was one of the best movies of last year. My number 10 is Birth of the Dragon. It, Birth of the Dragon was this kind of like what you were talking about with some of these. It was like, oh, right, I did see that. Yeah. Birth of the Dragon is the movie that was billed like it was uh, kind of a Bruce Lee bio, but a bio between like a fight that he had with this master. But when you actually go see the movie, it's all from the point of view of this fictitious white guy in the movie named Steve who's he's I forget his hey, name man. he's he's not that bad of an actor he's the he's the guy who played uh Elizabeth Olsen's brother in Ingrid Goes West um if you saw that I I you, I've seen 30 seconds of it uh -huh. today actually was, there you go. I was doing dishes uh -huh. and Sophie was playing with toys behind me and I turned around and she had gotten the, the PlayStation controller uh -huh. and from the kitchen she had turned on Ingrid Goes West. Oh, <laughs> She's a huge Aubrey Plaza fan. Yes, yes. Or she's a big fan of Steve from Birth of the Dragon. So it's 
you have this movie that could be about these really larger than life real figures, but it's about this fictitious guy who is in love with a a waitress at a restaurant that's run by the Chinese mafia. So then at the end, it kind of turns into a Bruce Lee movie where they're they're storming this Chinese restaurant and having a fight scene and. To describe it, it sounds like it would be interesting, but it's it's not. It was wildly misguided. I don't know why this guy was the lead in this story. I I said in the review for it, it would be like if you did a, a movie about the rumble in the jungle, but instead of being about Muhammad Ali or George Foreman, it's about some fake guy named Rick. Like, it just, this movie doesn't work. <laughs> Rick, it's not... Rick, he's the cut man's assistant. Yeah, it's like, I don't know why you went this angle with this story. It, and it, it wasn't even that well made of a movie either. It was, it was bad. What you got at uh, number nine? Uh, Triple X3, The Return of Xander Cage, the movie Brad forgot I saw. I thought it was me and Sarah at this movie, so when I was going through the list of all the midnight screenings episodes of last year, yeah, I saw that one on there and was like, yeah, that was a piece of shit. But... Sarah and I are usually at the Vin Diesel yeah. movies, so I, and, and for a while she and I were going to be at that movie, and it it was one of those last minute things where I remember getting like a text from you, like something about she might have been sick or something like that, so she had to stay home, and like at the last minute you came to go see Triple X. It's because I'm a good husband. <laughs> if you want to um, see that shit, uh, what can I say that's. Like, I reviewed the movie once. I don't want to fucking relive it. <laughs> well, this is going to be a quick video. <laughs> you could be like Brian in these videos and just go through the whole movie <coughs> from beginning to end. No, it was... <coughs> it was... What is it I said about the movie in the review, which I think is still one of my favorite lines of the year, is uh, I could have just stayed home and let the baby scream at me. <laughs> Let the baby scream at you and spray Axe body spray in yeah. your face. You're no, it, it, it was an Axe body spray Mountain Dew commercial without either of those products. And it's just like, hey, let's let's fit in all these ridiculous, unnecessary side characters that are, like, edgy. Uh-huh. Just edgy. Extreme, man. Edgy, yeah. Like, get the girl from, like, uh, Orange is the New Black. She's got tattoos. She'd be perfect mm -hmm. as a sniper. And it's like, oh, fuck you. Like, who gives it the best part of that sh whole shitty movie? It, and it don't, you know what, let, let, just for a second, my feelings on Vin Diesel. He's not a good actor. He's not. He can be. I've seen him give really good performances and some things. Yeah, yeah 15 years ago in, like, Boiler Room. And <laughs> or uh, the uh, Find Me Greg Guilty and uh, a few other things. But... But he's not, in my opinion, like, the Fast and the Furious movies are fun. Yeah. But not because of him. Kind of in spite of him, in my opinion. I don't mind him in those movies, but I think at least in those movies, for me anyway, Dominic Toretto is a much more likable character than Xander Cage. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous amounts of ego and, <laughs> like, there's not enough... How do I phrase this? There's not enough suspension of disbelief in the fucking world for me to believe that Vin Diesel is going to, like, fucking free dive skiing <laughs> off, like, a radio tower. Uh-huh. Like, fuck that shit. Yeah, I mean, the movie was, uh, it was a throwback to an era of action movies that, that I never terrible. that I never cared that much for. So yeah, I, this was one I I, I didn't like it either. It, it didn't have enough likability in terms of its lead character. Hey, for do it you guys to be any remember good. the late '90s when action movies were mediocre? Let's in, do in that. Early 2000s, yeah. like between the first Triple X and like Torque and shit like yeah. that. Like, nah, I don't. I personally don't need a throwback to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My number nine is the Bye Bye Man. This was, what I mostly remember about The Bye Bye Man was just the theatrical experience of it itself. The movie's dog shit. Like, it has zero rules to it whatsoever. You can, I, I think it was one of those that was, like, edited down to get younger people in there. But it's a movie that's not scary. It doesn't make any fucking sense. And 
it, it was... I, I don't know what this character is supposed to be. I just know he's got a stupid name like the Bye Bye Man. But there was only one screen that was showing this movie when we went to go see it. And it was me, Brian, and Allison. And... It came out on Friday the 13th, and it didn't get, like, a Thursday screening. So we went to go see it on Friday the 13th in the one theater it was playing at in Springfield, which meant every fucking 13-year-old that wanted to see this bullshit on Friday the 13th went to go see it. So there was not an empty seat in the house, and through, they're just talking and being rowdy. And That's when you need me at the movie. Dude, they were, they, like, they never stopped. They never stopped just collectively as a whole talking and shrieking to the point to where they would have just jumped at their own shadow upon leaving the movie theater. It was insane. Like, cops were called, and every adult in the audience, which I think was just us, <laughs> got free tickets and like I went out to use the bathroom at one point and the guy behind the the, the dude working concessions like her is pretty rowdy in there and yeah we got free tickets for it but it made for one of the best midnight screenings episodes this year I'll give it that but a combination of the movie being just horribly made not scary not really even that funny and having a dumb shit audience scream at this shit, man, fuck this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, kids play acting for each other. Now, see, that's, <laughs> that's when you, you, when that happens, you need to call me so I can just come and yell at the kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dave, we're at the bye bye man. You gotta come settle these fuckers down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, bring your belt. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of mace. Here's your free ticket, sir. You sit down and you shut the fuck up. People paid money to be here. It was a bye bye, man. <laughs> God. What? All right, we on number eight? Yeah, I think we're on number eight. Uh, girls trip. I didn't see Girls Trip. Now, that was uh, like one of two movies this year that I saw without you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw two movies this year with Brian. And the other movie you saw with Brian, I did see. Yeah, they're both on the list. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Girls Trip was... I, I, I feel weird putting it number eight. Because, to be honest, I probably hated Triple X more. Sure. Because Girls Trip, besides its numerous faults, uh -huh. at least... Honestly made me laugh. Yeah. Like, genuinely made me laugh a few times. Mm -hmm. There was shit in it that was honestly funny. It was just everything else that built to that happened after that, uh -huh. or in between those moments, and around those moments, was so fucking bad. Yeah. was so, <laughs> so just completely generic and mm -hmm. pointless and didn't need to exist. It, it was, it was kind of like... You want to make a comedy like The Hangover for an African-American female audience, mm -hmm. just fucking make it. Mm -hmm. Like, th the cast wasn't bad. It's sure. just they had nothing to fucking work with except for the one person who they're like, just go fucking crazy. Talk about fucking a grapefruit. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and those moments were funny. Mm -hmm. But they were funny in the way that it was just kind of like, this is really childish that I'm laughing at. <laughs> like, there is no intelligence to this. Uh -huh. There is no, like, forward thought. It doesn't do anything to, like, further the film. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, the 12-year-old in me is like, HA! A dick! Right. See, I was so tired. You just need those. This was one where I was, when I was scrolling through things that you saw, this was one of them where I was like, I, I know he didn't care that much for this movie, but I, 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 I know he didn't hate it. But I was, but again, like, 
I was like, but there's not much else on, on here to yeah, put no, down, so I got to write well, girl strip on like, here. Like I said, the, fir the first few on my list, they're, they're, I'm kind of reaching. I'm like, ah. Oh, well, there was, <laughs> or don't worry, I mean, yeah, there was still some of them I saw on there where I was like, well, that, well, that one's definitely going on there. Well, well and, and like, it, it, it's kind of bad in the same way that, like, the Best Man Holiday is bad, uh -huh. but it's not good in the same way that the Best Man Holiday is good. Best Man Holiday is amazing. Right, right. They're both not great movies. Sure. They both made me laugh out loud. Mm -hmm. But the reason the Best Man Holiday made me laugh out loud, mm -hmm. it wasn't because someone threw a dick in my face. It yeah. was the fact that it was so obvious that some of the actors did not give a shit and mm -hmm. just went with it. Yeah. That's what made Best Man Holiday <laughs> You know? No, yeah, and it was wildly unpredictable. <laughs> right, right. And this movie was... Very predictable. Yeah. Within minutes, you knew exactly what was going to happen mm. with every single character. Yeah. It was just... <clears throat> it did... Simon McCorkendale there. <laughs> He's fine. Yeah, He's yeah. going to turn into a bear halfway through this. That's all I got for that shit. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm reaching here, guys. Alright, well, my number eight is Fifty Shades Darker. <laughs> I didn't put Fifty Shades of Grey on my worst list that year. It was bad, Fifty Shades of Grey, but I was mostly bored at it, and there were there were just... It's one of those movies, like, I understood why it was on so many people's yeah. list when that first one came out, but I, I just saw more movies that year that either upset me more, or I remembered more, or at least had some kind of feeling about, or something. But man, this second movie, fuck that shit! Nothing happens in this crap. And the trailer for this movie, like, fools you into thinking something is. Like, the trailer for this movie is showing a helicopter crash, which is an explosion shot that's not in the movie. And it's showing, like, this girl stalking them. It's showing, like, Anastasia Steele's boss at her job being creepy. And sure, that stuff's in the movie for, like, a minute and is pretty quickly fucking resolved whenever it comes up. The rest of it is nothing. Like, they had to put all this shit in the trailer to make it look like, well, you know, hey, something interesting might happen in this. No! So much little shit happens in this movie that it's like... It's like when you're watching a movie that's where they've made a movie adaptation, but they split it into two parts. Like... Oh, Fifty Shades, blah, blah, part one, or something. Or, like, when they split up, like, uh, Mockingjay, the, the third uh, Hunger Games, where then you're left with, like, a bunch of scenes that should be cut, and, like, the pacing's really slow whenever that happens, because they're squeezing in all this stuff that should not be in a movie adaptation. That's like this, except it, it is the whole book. They didn't split this shit into two. Yeah, well, that's that's what happens when you make a shitty movie based off a shitty book. <laughs> a shitty book where not jack shit happens in the goddamn yeah. thing. It was bad, man. It was so bad. Like it was, it, it was rough sitting through that shit. <laughs> and that's only your what number eight? That's only my number eight. There's far worse movies on here. Oh man, <laughs> Jesus. All right. Number seven. Number seven, um, The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. Res hey, we were in the, uh, the one of the previews for that movie. We though. were. Mm -hmm. We were. Saying, I and I believe, not the worst Christian movie. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> because, like, in retrospect, like, I, I sat, I actually was like, I need to refresh on some of these movies, because it had been, like, a lot of the movies on my list are from, like, February of last year. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, I should like skim the videos and remember what I thought about things. But I don't didn't have to do it with the resurrection of Gavin Stone. I remember exactly how I felt about that movie. Yeah. Which was this is not good. Mm -hmm. But the lead actor is so fucking charming yeah. that it makes me wish that they had made this not a Christian movie, but it was just the setup for a comedy. Like a Johnny Knoxville movie. Yeah. Yeah, because but without, like, you know, dick jokes. Sure. <laughs> like, something like The Ringer, but about... Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you know, I was fine with that movie, because our... And I, I know this is the case with you, too. Uh, our 
bar for those is wildly different than a, than any other genre, really. Oh, yeah, no, like, it, it's, it's like, quite honestly, in most years, it wouldn't have made my list, let alone yeah. number seven. Because it, it's, like... I admit it. We we grade those Christian movies on a curve now. No, it, we really do. Yeah. And that one on the curve is like, you know, it's it's the one that's breaking the curve. It's the uh, one that's helping the lesser movies get better grades. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I remember I brought that up with Jared because he and I reviewed that All Saints movie. Yeah. And at first he was, at first he was like pretty negative towards it, and. When I, it, that less, I remember that kind of lesson throughout the review, because I, I, I was talking about the same thing I'm talking about with you right now, where it's like, this movie's not great, it's really just kind of hallmarky and made-for-TV-ish, but the message is good, and, like, it's, when yeah. you compare it to shit like God's Not Dead, and, and all war room, the and war room, and, and, and the horse shit like that, and then I remember Jared going like, yeah, okay, you know, you're kind of right. <laughs> well, and th that's true, but I mean, at the same time, yes, it is very hallmarky. It's very t made for TV movie quality. Oh, Gavin Stone? Yeah, Gavin Stone. Yeah. But you know what? It's still not good. It's still not a good movie. Like, if we hadn't seen all of these Christian horrible movies in the theater over the past couple of years, and we just randomly. And we, we go see this movie. <laughs> see Gavin Stone. It's the first of the Christian movies we see. Yeah. We wouldn't have been furious, but we would have been really confused, and we would have been a lot harder on it. And even, even for the person who wrote it, too, it was even better than what that person had done. It there was something I think I did it a had snob done something else. Yeah, there was something I think I did a snob episode on recently. I think it might have been like fucking of all things, like Christmas with a capital C. One of them that was really fucking bad, and it was and, and and I remember being like, oh well, they wrote Gavin Stone, like okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's a, and the other thing about Gavin Stone is I honestly feel it would have been a much worse movie if it weren't for Brett Dalton. He was very funny in the movie. He was not only funny; he was the only time in any of these movies I actually liked one of the characters. No, dude. Yeah, like even. Bef Unironically. Yeah, like, yeah. I enjoyed that character. Yeah. Still not a good movie. <laughs> oh, my, neither's my number. What are we on, seven? Yeah. Okay, my number seven uh, is Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. This movie that had the balls to put the, word, the, the words The Long Haul in the title. I saw this movie with Irving the same night that we saw Alien Covenant. And when we were reviewing it, I remember thinking, like, okay... Okay, well, I got my problems with Alien Covenant, but it's not the worst movie you could be going to see this weekend. Man, this movie was... It felt like going to the theater to see just a shit road trip made for Disney Channel movie because the acting in it is very... That kind of over the top where you think they might have given the kids crack before every like, one of their lines. Just the one with Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom Everett Scott. Uh, they're, they're the parents. They're going. It's they're 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 basically doing their own kids movie version of Vacation, but it's got the same some of the same plot points as like that shitty Vacation reboot that came out. Except it's a kids movie. All the acting from the kids and like everyone in this movie is all that kind of. Disney Channel, like, gosh, mom, ugh, oh, why don't you just give me my phone, ugh, and like, the kid who's the main character is just talking like he's cracked out with his eyes, like, I just, I need my phone, I, I gotta get to the gaming championship, and it's, it's that for 90 minutes, and the best part of this movie is shit that's not even supposed to be funny. You can see the same extras pop up in the background, like, in different parts of the country. This is a movie about a 36-hour road trip where they're going from, like, Indiana to Ohio. Like, <laughs> maybe not that exactly, but, like, kind like of that... Like a five-hour drive. Yeah, yeah, dude. And it's, like, 36 or 48 hours. When they get to their destination, they're like, is that Grandma's house? And the dude's like, I don't know. Like, then why am I here? <laughs> this stupid movie. Like, it's... And it does, like... I remember there... I think there's, like, a vomit joke gravitron scene in it that's like that you've seen better before like in the sandlot or even like problem yeah. child 2 is a better film than this 
I don't know why this shit was rebooted. The funniest thing about this movie is that since it's rebooted and it's got a different cast, the older brother in the movie's name is Roderick, so there were, like, fans of the series that were mad about the recasting. So, like, on Twitter, it's like, hashtag not my Roderick was going all weekend. There's, there are hilarious things surrounding this movie that have nothing to do with the actual jokes in the film. Yeah, man, Irving and I were, I think, the only ones in the theater for that shit. Number six. Uh, The Stray. That was one of my favorite bad movies this year. Well, same here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's six on my list, probably for the same reasons that you and I both kind of enjoyed the experience. Oh, hell yeah. That when you make a movie... A, a, a movie that's supposed to have a sad, poignant move, moment where an animal dies. One, you make that the end of the movie. Mm hmm Two, well, on the same point, you don't make it the middle of the movie where the, the poor dog just gets struck by fucking lightning in a tent. The dog barely has anything to do with this movie, too. Exactly. This, this movie called The Stray. <laughs> right. So the... Halfway through the movie, the stray gets hit by lightning in a tent. Uh, and I immediately thought, wait, is the movie over in five minutes? We've only been here a half hour. Yeah. So the next 45 minutes is this dude who also got struck by the lightning carrying a dead dog down a hill. That looks like it's a prize he won at a carnival. I know, just over his shoulders. There's... Like he's coming home with meat. There's Pratt falls in the scene. Yeah. Like the kid falls... Not even a minute after this dog dies, there's a, like, a shit joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, like, all poignancy and all, like, seriousness and sadness that could have come out of the scene where this, yeah. this lovable animal dies. Yeah. Is just, within seconds, completely crapped out by <laughs> the fact that it's only halfway through the movie. Mm -hmm. A kid makes a crap joke. Yeah. There's a hole in the tent from where the lightning struck that suddenly there's a fucking bear looking through. Oh, yeah! Oh, did you forget about the bear? Yeah, fuck. This was, this was one of my favorite bad movies this year. This is on, like, that list of, like, just bad movies you had to be there for. Yeah, where it was like, no, the, this, the stray was, it's hard to describe. Yes, uh, this, Wish Upon, The Book of Henry... None of them are on my worst list. They all easily could. I just happened to see more movies that were more technically inept than them. Yeah. But uh, <coughs> I've, it's a Mormon film, The Stray is. Yeah. Like, it's not... And it's not overly preachy about any no. faith, honestly. It, it was marketed as a faith-based faith, a faith -based movie. And, and there was a little bit, like, at the end when they give the dog a funeral. But at the same time, it wasn't preachy. The, it was just like, they're giving the animal a funeral. It's something you would see in any other movie. You've got to see something. Because my wife is was raised Mormon. She, she's she's ex-Mormon, but she was, she was raised Mormon. And so she's seen a lot of Mormon films, and she really wants to see this movie. And so she, a lot of movies that were put out by a company called Hailstorm. And she's shown me a few of them. And they all have... Not only some of the same actors from The Stray, like the guy who played the neighbor I've seen in a few of these movies, they all have the same, like, strange sense of humor, like, that this movie does. Like, she showed me that there's this movie called The RM about a returned uh, missionary. It's great. Because it's it like The Stray, where it's like, you're sitting there and the tone is one thing, but then suddenly, like, a... A dog starts attacking the guy's leg, and it's obviously a toy dog. And then, like, something dramatic might happen, and then the guy will climb through a window. But he's in the wrong house, and inside the room is an Asian stereotype. <laughs> and for... There was one part towards the end of this movie where the, the mother is standing there, and she's just given birth and is holding the baby, and the guy goes and gives her a hug, and is like, oh, oh, and then you just hear because the baby was in between them and then it's flat <laughs> oh sorry like there was one called mobsters and mormons that we watched one called baptists at our barbecue <laughs> these movies are great and the stray like easily like the stray doesn't ever mention a specific religion in it like no, you it said yeah but the other movies do but they have that so they I wish every Christian movie were like The Stray. No, me too, because, because, because you know what it would be like? It would be like a puzzle. 
Yeah, dude. Like, everyone would be a puzzle. It's like, okay, what's the moral? What's happening? Uh -huh. Is that a bear? Mm -hmm. Why the fuck is he carrying the dog down the hill? <laughs> Did he just offer to steal that child? Like, what is happening? Remember when he was going around collecting children? Yeah. He's going to the dentist's office. First time he met this guy. Hey, you got a son? Oh, I, would he go camping with us? What? <laughs> and it's Jimmy Olsen from <laughs> Batman v Superman. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> Baffling, and it's the the kid from Heaven Is for Real consistently giving his dad shit through the whole movie. Right, it, it's just it, it, it's it, it's that kind of glorious bad that's just like oh this is bad, but man this is great. Yeah, I yeah man, like we we hadn't been that passionate about something since like Saving Christmas. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, my number six, I wish was the stray. Uh, my number six is just getting started. And maybe it's not terribly fair, because this was a 90-minute movie and I only saw an hour of it. But granted, you know, I saw an hour of Hillary's America. That was my number one last year. Uh -huh. Although, t t I guess to be fair to just getting started, it's not Nazi propaganda. So, like, <laughs> this was a... Not everything can be. Yeah, true. Um, so, Irving and I go see this movie, Just Getting Started, where it's like if Grumpy Old Men were a Hallmark Christmas movie and a really shitty one. Because I like Grumpy Old Men. But this was... Ron Shelton wrote and directed this, and it's his first movie in years, and uh, you could tell it, because it's this kind of big cast, like, it, it seems like they're all just, he's, they're all favors, you know, yeah. it's got this big cast because Ron Shelton is making it, so honestly, it looked like they were probably having fun making this movie. It was miserable sitting through this. It's, it's, uh, Morgan Freeman is hiding out because he's in witness protection and he's been running this like golf course for several years, but then he's on the news and Jane Seymour sees him on there and wants to send a hitman after him. So then Tommy Lee Jones shows up there. You don't know if he's the hitman or not, but the two of them are then fighting. They're doing the grumpy old men thing where except in this instead of Anne Mark and Margaret, they're fighting over Rene Russo, and it's just people being miserable in this fucking film. Like, uh, <laughs> granted, it's it's not that often I go see a movie, and in the opening credits it says "and Johnny Mathis." I didn't even know he was still alive, so I was like, "Well, hey, kudos." I didn't know until right now. Hi, you're right. Yeah, he's in this. You can tell because Morgan Freeman's like, "My, I'm friends with Johnny Mathis." It's horribly made there's a another part with an obviously fake dog in it where Rene Russo's out painting landscapes or some shit or maybe Tommy Lee Jones is I can't remember but someone's oh, a, a coyote comes out and steals her dog and it's just this horribly edited scene where it's obviously just some fake Pomeranian in this coyote's mouth so what happened when we only saw an hour of this movie was uh at first, I remember thinking, like, oh, thank God we're the only ones in here. And then during the opening credits, some couple showed up, and I was like, fuck! It always happens that way lately. Uh, it's like, we're getting settled, and we're like, no one else is here. We can, like, even if this is bad, we can, like, bullshit and talk yeah. through it. Nope. No, it was, oh, God, I was just antsy as hell sitting through this. Like, and it, it title drops the movie, like, I don't think you like me very much. Oh, we're just getting started. <laughs> Piss off. So, an hour into this movie, the manager, one of the theater employees, comes in and is like, the building needs to be evacuated. There's a gas leak. This movie was so bad that, like, instinctively, I just went, thank God! <laughs> so I was like, who did I say that too loud? So we went out, and they closed the theater for the night, so we reviewed the first hour of this movie, but it was bad. I, I can't imagine what would happen in the next half hour of this movie that would make me be like, you know, maybe I'm being too harsh. Orgy. <laughs> yeah, in this PG-13, yeah. Um, no, so Irving and I are, are planning on talking about the last half hour, like when it hits video or something, but until then, yeah, this is my, oh, are we on number six? Yeah, this yep. is my number six. Number five. The Case for Christ. <laughs> oh, right. I forgot about that. And once again, grading on a curve. Yeah. 
the case for Christ of all of the Christian movies that have come out, technically speaking, on a technical level, one of the best made ones. Especially Pure Flix. It, yeah. This is coming oh, from Pure yeah. Flix. Pure Flix, and I think the same director as God's Not Dead, right? It might have been. Yeah, but a period piece mm. where everything seemed in period. Yeah. Well lit. Uh huh. Good cinematography. Halfway decent acting in the lead. But where it fails is the premise of the movie. Yeah. Whereas this educated man, <laughs> an educated man. The most gullible educated man. Who is a reporter. Yeah. Whose job, wait, he was a reporter, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whose job it is. Or wait, wasn't he a he was film a rep- executive or something? No, no, he was a reporter because his wife. Had a the daughter almost died. Remember? Right, right. So his his he wife becomes born again. Yeah, and so he's he's an invest he's a uh, investigative journalist. an investigative reporter. Right, right. Yeah. So he goes through all this process to find proof or or to disprove. Yeah, and, and instead he finds proof that Christ is real and so on and so forth. But for a man who was an investigative journalist. <laughs> Man, he overlooks a lot. <laughs> Just premise alone gets this in my worst five movies of the year. It's not in mine. Yeah, it, it, well, it's not a very good movie. But it, here's how we described it, and it's it's very accurate. When we reviewed this movie, we're like, this movie's like Spotlight if nothing mattered. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like wasn't there a subplot in the movie that was way more interesting that was about a guy being like falsely accused of some crime or something? Something like and, that, yeah. No, yeah. It, it'd be like Spotlight. Or Zodiac. Yeah. If like, yes. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. At the end of Spotlight the or Zodiac, if, if there's really no stakes for anybody but the reporter. <laughs> and... And quite frankly, to be honest, he just wants to keep his wife happy, so he's like, yeah, fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) Sure, why not? (laughs) Yeah, it was, uh, again, like, this was... It's certainly on a technical level one of the better Pure Flix movies, but at the same time, I'd rather watch one of the shittier ones. Right, right, because... And this one I found just morally reprehensible as much as any of them that are outright hateful, Mm -hmm. because this one was... Probably and sadly their most effective piece of propaganda they've put out. <laughs> but at the same time, uh-huh. the premise of that propaganda is so ridiculous and stupid. That it, I, I, like, if you want to be a person of faith, be a person of faith, that's yeah. fine. But don't try and prove to me with bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> with utter and complete fucking nonsense that your point of view is right. Just go like, I believe in Jesus, and I'll go, right on, man. Yeah. Now, if you go, I believe in Jesus because of this, 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 and this, and I look at it and can go, that didn't fucking happen. (laughs) Then I call you an asshole. (laughs) It's one of those movies that could be described with, like, you know, kind of like Saving Christmas in the sense where it's like, one person goes blah, 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 and the other person goes, well, blah, 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 and then the other, and then the, the it's original It's like a person, Sims concert. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, then that other oh. person's like, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. more ambitious saving Christmas. <laughs> yeah, now, the movie was just wildly uninteresting to me. I remember being yeah. more bored at the movie. No, it was, and that was the else. other thing, it was insufferably boring. yeah. Yeah, like, it's sort of like I kind of wish it, wished it was God's Not Dead It was too. like in one of those movies where I end up in this position in the theater, like... Mm-hmm. <sighs> we, we both... We had to sit near the back, remember? Yeah. Like, it was, it was one where it was it was really crowded there, which a lot of these movies can be, but we were seated near, like, the back corner at this Depends thing. Depends on what Chucklehead Church is busting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We did go see it on a weekend, I think. Yeah. Uh, my number... I, I know this is going to be... You're, you're probably going to have this higher than mine, but uh, my number five is the Emoji Movie. It's only number five! Uh, dude, man, like, the, the remaining... That'll I'm tell a, you how... I am terrified of the rest of your list. I think I you're going to understand. <laughs> I, at least one of them, or two of them, actually. I know you'll be like, okay, I understand. The, look, the Emoji Movie is is 
if I'm judging in terms of complete soullessness and cynicism and just a nothing of a product of a film, this one would certainly be much higher. I didn't get... I didn't really get that passionately mad about this movie. Uh, it, it, I was mostly just kind of bored in this movie than I was anything else. Uh, it was frustrating in the sense that they could have, because no one was looking forward to this thing. Everyone thought, like, an emoji movie, what? That's going to be fucking terrible. They really could have put out something to just surprise people and be like, look, we've made something clever. We've made something relatively ambitious. Like the no. Lego movie. Exactly, like the Lego movie. Or even, maybe even something that's just watchable because of its batshit insanity. Because we got stuff like this when we were kids. Yes. Whether it was stuff like Rubik the Amazing Cube or any other cartoon to come out of some then popular product. Yeah. But... Some of that stuff could be just batshit insane to the point to where it's still kind of entertaining. This, now, it was every cynical, soulless, bad thing that you thought it was going to be. It was, it was an ugly thing to look at. It was just a product. It was just, now we're advertising this product. Now we're doing this product, this product, this product. There's no clever joke in the thing. There's no ambition at all. It's just... It's just a dead movie. The only reason, the only reason why it's not higher for me is because I was mostly just sitting there bored during the thing. Had I been sitting there, like, kicking my seat or just pissed off, yeah, it would certainly be much higher than it is. But even though I was mostly just sitting there uninterested at this thing, goddamn, it was a bad fucking movie. Dude. <laughs> and I know we'll get to it again when... We will. <laughs> yeah, when it's when it's much higher on your list. <laughs> yeah. So I'll save more, I guess, for save when you more. get to it. So, uh, all right, that was my number five. What's your number four? Kidnap. <laughs> yeah, kidnap. All right. Let's start this off. Kidnap. Even in the ranking of being bad. I wouldn't say it's the fourth worst movie of the year, mm -hmm. the, or even the fourth worst movie I saw this year. But it was definitely the most pointless movie I saw this year. <laughs> I can see that, yeah. Also, it was 75 fucking minutes long. Was it really that short? It was only 75 minutes. Wow, okay. How fucking... Once again, <laughs> pointless. Yeah. Why would you put a 75 minute long movie mm -hmm. in the theater, mm -hmm. let alone pay Halle Berry's salary to be in it? Mm -hmm. If they had to cut this piece of shit down to 75 minutes, yeah. imagine how bad the minimum 15 minutes that they cut out of it were. I like that it's one of those two that you can tell was made like three years ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it, it. you think the concept of Oh, a 75-minute chase scene where a woman Certainly. has, of all motivations in the world, her child is in that car. Yeah. Could be so fucking boring. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. Yeah. Nothing happens until the last five minutes where it's the fucking, like, PG-13 version of 8mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like where it suddenly a, gets gritty. What a weird goddamn turn. Yeah. Out of after seventy minutes of nothing to go into that shit. Yeah. And be like, oh, we're gonna try and be suspenseful now. It's like, motherfucker, you had your chance. Yeah. <laughs> like we're done. This. What was frustrating? It's it's not on my list, but was what frustrated me the most about this movie was. If it was entertaining enough, it's something I could certainly go along with. Like, yeah, I'd rather be sitting at home and watching something like Breakdown, which is a much better movie than this. But what was really frustrating me about Kidnap was there were so many times in the first 15 minutes that this whole thing could have ended. There were so many oh, times yeah. where she could have done something to very easily stop this from happening. Yeah, yeah like, on the freeway and shit, like... 
you, you know what happens when you drive like an asshole down the freeway? Uh -huh. Someone calls the police. Yeah. So drive like an asshole. Get the cops called on you. Mm. And just lay on the horn and don't stop. Like... <laughs> or when the car is like, when they're in the merge thing and the cars are all stopped. Yeah. And it's like, just the car is like, got one parked car in front of it, one, or one stop car in front of it, one stop car behind it. Hit them! Ram them, man. <laughs> like, there's there's no escape. It's just like really yeah. thin. It, so much stuff like that was happening yeah, in this no. movie, and it was really like, frustrating. And, and I understand the urge to like, oh, I don't want to hit that car, my kid's in it. Like, But at but, the same time... Yeah, like... Sometimes you take a calculated risk. <laughs> Like in speed, shoot the hostage. Yeah. <laughs> I got watch speed <laughs> instead of this movie. I watched speed again a couple months ago. It still holds up. No, yeah, it's four on my list because it was fucking that pointless. <laughs> it wasn't technically poorly made. Halle Berry did uh, a fine job. It was yeah. just fucking pointless. Even that lady playing the villain, I yeah. did a good job. Yeah. Just fucking pointless. Well, my number four is the snowman. <laughs> Sarah told me all about the snowman. You gotta see the snowman. Holy shit. Like, when we were getting trailers for the snowman, I was sitting there thinking, like, you know what, okay, it looks like a good throwback to when movies like this came out a lot. Like, on the high end of it, it would be something like seven. And on the low end, you'd have... I don't know, like The Bone Collector maybe or something, or like just when you often had movies like Kiss the Girls yeah. or th movies like that. So like, I remember thinking like, okay, this will be like a throwback to a movie like that. At the least, maybe it would be like the least of those other movies where it would just be kind of uninteresting. Dude, I this is one of those movies you've got to see to know how bad this shit no, is. No, Sarah explained, uh, like, it's like there's just parts missing. <laughs> yes! This movie is so bad that watching it, I suddenly didn't know how movies worked. It's executive produced by Scorsese, too. Like It's got Sam Fender in it. I it's mean, insane, the talent that's in this. It's, it's, it's from the director of, like, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, and, like, the caliber of cast and people behind it. It's crazy how it turned out this bad. It's, there are just parts of this movie that are missing and you can tell you can tell there's just chunks that just don't go together like one character looks more disheveled in this than he is in this in this part he he's functioning and then in this a second later he's passed out drunk like there nothing makes sense in this film like there's whole subplots like one of them involving jk simmons being the most obvious pervert ever who just goes up to women at a party he's like Mm, click with this camera. You're going to my hotel. <laughs> like, it's doing a shitty accent, too. Like, I just, I, I don't get this movie. And it's even so, it's horribly edited. There's a part at the end where characters are just tied up in chairs, and the way that they escape is I still don't know what happened. Like, like did the camera get wet? <laughs> is this movie being filmed by a snowman? It puts up snowmen in parts that only the audience can see like who is this here for there's parts where characters just die and then the actor will come back later and be like oh i'm their twin and has nothing to do with the movie <laughs> there's val kilmer is in this film why i don't know um <laughs> But Val Kilmer is in this in a few flashback scenes that, again, could easily be cut and should be because he recently went through, like, about a throat cancer. Yeah. So because of that, his voice is dubbed. But, dude, they didn't even try. Like, it's... I've seen more convincing dubbing than, like, a USA Network Steven Seagal film. Like, it's Val Kilmer sitting there, and you're like, is that Val Kilmer? And when he talks, it he sounds like Bane. Like, it, <laughs> it's wildly distracting. Like, here's what I think about this case. Like, that is, dude, you didn't even try with this shit. <laughs> it was perplexing how bad this film was. God, it was, ugh. Yeah, Sarah and I were, we, I, I was at a loss during this film. Oh, you know what? I'm going to get Sarah for her birthday on Blu-ray. You've got to see this film. You've, you, holy shit, you've got to see this fucking movie. You've never seen a movie like this fuck up this bad. <laughs> you know, it, I do love, like, a glorious, high-cost, 
ultra talented train wreck. You've got to see this movie. <laughs> This is one I wish I could have also sent you and Brian to, because you'll just you'll, you'll just sit there confused. <laughs> well, I was thinking about taking up weed again, so I mean... Yeah, honestly, you sit there, smoke, watch this shit. Oh, oh. I, I want to see it again. <laughs> it's, it's based on a series of books, and it's like the seventh book. The main character's <laughs> name is... <coughs> Harry Hole. Like, yeah, man. Who? All right. What's your. Uh, oh, we on three? Three, yeah. I, I can't tell. I collide. I'm surprised you put that above. Uh, it's I, That was one where I was sending you movies that I would have thought would have been on the, like, 10 through 8 or something. And, and I had to think long and hard about the placement of Collide. Yeah. Because. And, and like I said, my, my list this year, I, I'm grading based on weird things this year. Yeah. And th the reason Clyde is at number three is for several reasons. Mm -hmm. One, I never heard of it before it came out. <laughs> Neither had I. Before the day you called me and said, you want to go see Clyde? And the fuck went, is that? And I went, what? Yeah. Two, it was a bad movie. Yeah. Three. I forgot about it. <laughs> so did I. Completely forgot about that yeah. movie till we brought it up like a week ago. At review. the commuter? Yeah. Yeah. Remember Collide? <laughs> Fuck is that? Oh, yeah. Four. Mm hmm. Forgot about it again till today. <laughs> and you still didn't remember that shit? It's that movie. Had to Wikipedia it to remember the plot. That's that that's that's how non-existent this movie is in my brain. Is that I read the plot earlier today. Yeah. Can't remember it. Remember when Ben Kingsley was introduced into the movie by No! Ben, no, I no. don't! He was talking about I remember he had an accent and a gun. Yes, and he's obsessed with but Travolta that could be movies. Any Ben Kingsley movie. Oh, true, yeah. Where he has an accent and a gun. Ex um, like, if you gave Gandhi a gun, he could have been playing Gandhi like, for all I fucking know. Um, he has an obsession with, like, he's talking about the movie Perfect with John Travolta. That's and, and right, Jamie Lee yeah. Curtis. Really weird tangents in the film. And My thought's only Anthony Hopkins in, like, a powder blue, double-breasted three-piece. I thing. forgot he was in this. Right! See, this is what I'm and talking about. he's the villain! This is why it's number three. Yeah. This is why it's number three. Because it was so... Uh, you know, uh, just... Like, like, like dust in the wind. It's <laughs> just fucking gone. <laughs> if it was a movie that, like... Who was the lead? It was, it was Nicholas, Nicholas Holt, Holt right? and yeah. uh, um, Felicity Jones. Yeah. So... This was one. This is a movie that, had I rented it or maybe watched it with Film Brain, like the same day we watched like that Mark Paul Gossler Bruce Willis movie, like I I would have maybe thought nothing of it and been like, well, okay, it's fine to stumble across on Netflix or something or but, maybe at the video store. But this shit was in theaters. Exactly. <laughs> like and that, it was it was in theaters and then it was gone. Oh, like, dude, that, this, that's the yeah. tagline of this movie should have been, and then it was gone. Yeah. Like, because it, it, that it, it's number three on my list mm -hmm. for no other reason than I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, I don't blame you. Like, because it, it was easily to tell what this movie was going to be when it just showed up out of nowhere and yeah. with its poster. Yeah. You could you could kind of get a sense you of what... You knew exactly what it was. There was going to be a long car chase. Yeah. There were going to be two kids in love, and the dude was going to have, like, a, a, a rough backstory. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Another movie came out this year that did very similar things. Oh, yeah. A baby Driver. Yeah. And it is still, I would say, one of my top five movies of the year. It baby was a Driver. great film. Yeah. Like, I want to watch Baby Driver again right now. I think we mentioned that in Baby Driver. We are like, this is the better version of Kalai. See, and I forgot about <laughs> yeah, Kalai. I think you did, too. Like, I forgot about that shit. Yeah. That's how forgettable it is. That's why it's number three. Um, 
Right, my number three, and you didn't see this movie, but I'm sure you'll understand why it's this high up. Boo 2, a Medea Halloween. <laughs> you know, I was wondering when it was going to show up on the list, uh, and I was... I, I, I don't know what has happened in the past couple of years. i got to bring this up. I don't know if you've been purposely giving me a break, but I haven't seen a Tyler Perry movie in like two years. Because when, uh, when Single Moms Club came out, that was when Sarah and I were like, you know, we should probably go see one of, one of these just to see. Yeah. And then you were gonna, you and Brian were gonna be at Medea Halloween, but... Sophie was born like that week. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. So then with Medea Halloween 2 coming out, it just made sense for me to be there because I also saw the first one. And as we talked about in this video, like the review for the first Medea was like, I think, 90 minutes. It's our longest midnight yeah. screenings. Then the second one was a little over an hour. He just finds newer ways of surprising you. Like, just when you think, like... Well, okay, like maybe th this movie was terrible, and I'm sure this next one will probably match it. I I can't see how how it could be worse. I can't see how it could be worse or more inept. Nope. Yeah. Like, like nope, not like, at all. Like the dude doesn't give a fuck. He's making money. He's making a shitload of money, and Medea Halloween Two was so goddamn unambitious and so cheap in ways that are forgivable when you're working with a micro budget because there's parts where they just but use But he doesn't have to work. No, with a yeah, micro yeah. Budget. There's like, there's parts where he's just using like room sound and stuff like that which again is forgivable in a certain kind of movie, but in this is like jarring when it yeah. happens and it's the same shit happening again. And they still even found a way for that not to make any sense. Right. Because the teenage daughter, Tyler Perry's teenage daughter in this, suddenly it's her birthday. That wasn't mentioned last year, or it's like her birthday's the day before Halloween, yeah. but it's still, like, it's like, this was never mentioned or brought up, and whatever lesson she was learning as a bratty teenager from the first film, gone. it's just gone, so yeah. she's still a little bitch in this film as well, and it's the same thing. She goes off with her friends to hang out with this fraternity made up of YouTube celebrities, <laughs> um, and... That, you know what, quite frankly, I can't blame them because we're very low-tier YouTube celebrities. And if Tyler Perry called us... Yeah! We go I work a cheap. fucking second. I work very cheap, Tyler Perry. Very I would do cheap. that shit for free. Yeah, so would I. You could get... Why pay to put Fousey Tube in your movie or the Man Bun guy when you can get us for free? <laughs> Probably because we've been saying horrible things about him and his skills for years. <laughs> well, we loved Gone Girl, uh, <laughs> and I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to Acrimony, but um, no, I'm this... looking forward to Acrimony in the same sense that I think it'll be a lot like Temptation, but better acted. Yeah, because it's starring Taraji P Henson. Yeah, no, this. This was the same jokes over and over again. It was Uncle Joe talking about bitches and hoes again and again and again and again. It was Medea talking about doing drugs in her past and being a hooker again and again and again and again. It was the same things again. And it was the same kind of padding as the first film, where it's a ten-minute scene of them just in the den, just riffing off of each other with the same jokes again and again. It was repetitive, and it was the same movie again. It was the same movie with the same lessons and the same plot. Just it just managed to make itself worse. And I didn't. I'm it's, like, how does that even work? It's a really impressive skill. Set. It's incredibly impressive. It's really, I, I, I respect. You know, like God, this this movie makes Ernest Scared Stupid look like John Carpenter's Halloween. Listen, don't you talk smack on Ernest. <laughs> the first movie I bought on Blu-ray was yeah. Ernest Scared Stupid and, Ernest, and also Ernest Goes to Camp. They're objectively terrible, but They're I great. love them. They are the better... Those movies and these movies, like, 
almost exist in the same kind of like because okay like the, like Medea Halloween is like this universe's Ernest Scared Stupid and like there's even like a goes to jail yeah. in both of the series and you could probably make some other parallels too only if Ernest movies had plots about incest and like yeah. domestic abuse and shit like that like I do again. I respect balance. I respect combining those tones. I really do. But there was no love that went into this film. There was certainly no craft. But I mean, who's going to this expecting that? But there was really no love in terms of any writing or yeah, directing no. or anything. It no more so than usual because he's going to make that movie or less so than usual for you know four hundred thousand dollars. On his own compound. On probably. his own compound with equipment he already owns. He's going to pay everybody yeah. in the movie SAG minimum wage. Yeah. And he's going to make $10 million. Yeah. You know, that's... Oh, yeah. I'm sure the movie made its money back. Oh, it, I'm sure it made a healthy Oh, product. that was another thing about this movie. They were trying to say that this movie had... I don't know. Like, the budget that they listed for this movie, there's no way this movie cost as much as the budget they listed. There is no way. They, they say it cost a couple million, probably. No, they said it cost probably like 20 or 30 or maybe even above that. It was some astronomical number where it was like, well, he, if you're that's, spending... That's what he's paying himself. Yeah, it would be like if we tried saying that the budget for Jesus Bro was like $10 million. Like... Dude, if, if we had had $10 million for Jesus Bro, Jesus Bro would have been a very different movie. <laughs> and I wouldn't have been in it. Yeah, you would have. <laughs> you still would have been in the movie. No, the Rickhead would have been played by Christian Slater. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. C. Thomas Howell. <laughs> no, C. Thomas Howell would have been Santa Christ. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but... Not C. Thomas Howell as Santa Christ. C. Thomas Howell as his character from Soul Man as Santa Christ. Yes. Because he's got to get into college. He's got to get into Santa Claus University. <laughs> <laughs> this sequel's stupid. <laughs> and I got nothing much else to say about Medea Halloween 2. It was bad. Even for one of these, it was bad. Like, Medea Halloween 1 was just a product churned out just to get a title like Medea Halloween out there and to ride off of the joke that Chris Rock had in Top 5. And, and this managed to be even less ambitious yeah. than the first one. Uh, what's your uh, two? Two. Uh, let There Be Light. Okay, so I know what number one is now. <laughs> All right, Let There Be let there be lights gonna come. Let there be lights gonna come up on my end too. Oh, okay. Is it is it your your two or? Oh, you'll see. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. So, let there be light. The most cynical, poorly made, hateful piece of shit that came uh -huh. out this year. A lot of these Christian movies I find offensive for a lot of reasons uh -huh. because they're 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 hateful towards other faiths, other ethnicities. This was hateful towards when done right, the most benign mm -hmm. thing there is, which is atheism, which is not giving a shit. Uh huh. Which this character who, who, who's just a hateful son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. And I understand you lose your kid, you get better. Mm -hmm. Like if I lost my daughter, I would be an angry, hateful man too. Mm -hmm. And I would probably act out and be a douchebag. Mm -hmm. But this guy was so inhuman. Mm -hmm. It's such a horrible. <laughs> Hateful caricature. Uh huh. And then, just poof, it all changes for Oh, me. yeah. <laughs> With Including his, his crippling alcoholism. His, oh, yeah, which is gone <laughs> in a second. Just suddenly, like, no DTs, no nothing. Just like, uh -huh. nah, I don't drink anymore. Also, I don't wear black. <laughs> like, I went from wearing black 
So where now I, I wear light blue polos that mm -hmm. are just a little too snug. Oh, and I tuck them in. I tuck them in. Before, before I forget, my favorite part of you and Brian's review is the fact that um, we lost monetization on that video because the video opens with you going, Fuck Brad Jones! <laughs> I assume that's why. <laughs> really? I think because the first word was fuck. I did not know that you lost monetization. Well, I mean, it limited. It went it went down to limited, and like so, that some places there might still be ads for it. But uh, I think by the time that happened, there had already been a lot of hits on it, so it wasn't that big of a. But <laughs> so I lost you money because you sent me to that sh piece. It of was movie. worth it, man. Like I would have sent you guys to that movie for free. Like like it it was worth it. I was like I was like, well, I probably already made back all the ticket costs and everything from even just me and Allison going to yeah. see it the week before. It was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it because the video was hilarious. And you guys were, t you guys were like, I remember Allison in our review going like, well, okay, I think I want to maybe go easy on this at least. Like, because, you know, I want to go easy on the kids a little bit. No, meanwhile, fuck those kids. Meanwhile, fuck those oh, kids. I'll get to that when I get to the same movie. But like, but you and meanwhile, you and Brian are like, I want to cut those fucking kids. <laughs> it's like, it's too bad only one of them fucking died. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, I, I, like, I said it in the review, like, good on Kevin Serbo for being at a point where he can do what he wants to do. And he does a, his acting is, he, his he's acting a, is still... He can play a part like this. Yeah, no, and he was the best part of God's Not Dead. Totally. Um, him and Dean Cain. <laughs> yeah. But, like, good on him for being at a point in his career where he can just make the shit he wants to make, regardless of how irresponsible, hateful, and stupid it is. <laughs> good for him. Uh-huh. I, I really, like, motherfucker, do another, like, eight seasons of Andromeda, and I might, like, actually give a fuck, because you're piece of shit movie and it just casting his entire family like his oh, his wife and his actual children he cast one of his actual children as his dead son i think that was an actor oh was it yeah i think i i, I remember looking at that up later and i think that was an actor that, right. that was another actor but, but like and like the one scene with special effects where it's just like remember back in the day we had a uh, a holiday store here in town right what was it? like the party we, tree the party tree. yeah and, and in the party tree, year-round, they had this fucking tunnel. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, spun, yeah. Yeah. Right? With a little, like, fucking lights on it that, like... It would you throw you to... off your balance. You right, gotta right. hold on to these rails. So the big special effect is they went in one of those, spray-painted the whole thing fucking green, and then just projected pictures on it. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. It's like, what a shitty special effect. Like, honestly, like, Jesus, bro, our special effects were better. And our movie was better. It's the oh. same movie. <laughs> it's the, it is the it is the same movie. Yeah. Only only it's zero hour to our I, movie's airplane, only if airplane were made first. And and, and, <laughs> and not to be egotistical or anything, but I mean, I'm a better leading man. Oh yeah. <laughs> Max fucking force. <laughs> God damn. That movie. It was one that like I and, and, said it before and I'll say it again I honestly wish this movie had come out before Jesus bro just so we could have stolen shit from so him. we could have had a cancer just, plot so we could have had cancer yeah. oh and alcohol just rage I would have made the Rick had such an alcohol <laughs> just such a hateful like he uh -huh. would have he, like it, it, not even like drunk driving the car like he would have been like a violent drunk he would have been like smacking the shit out I would have been like hitting or, fraud or to even parody like that Pastor Vinny character this oh former my God. mafioso preacher who with, shows with, up in this film the, the dude who had obviously been in a few too many prison fights yeah. in real life so his teeth were all fake and it was obviously like one piece <laughs> let me tell you about this guy no named Jesus like it's <laughs> like Please do, man. Yes. <laughs> like, I, I want the spinoff movie of yeah. Pastor Vinny. Oh, my God. Just me paint too. fences and shit. <laughs> <laughs> paint fences. Spin out wisdom. <laughs> like, imagine, imagine, like, a movie about Pastor Vinny, like, but with the plot of Sister Act. Yeah. 
It's just, just him and a bunch of kids. It's the Harvey Keitel character who has to go to the yeah, convent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, my. But I, he's already a believer. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, my number. Two, I'll talk more about Let There Be Light in a minute. But first, I got to get to my number two film, which is Chips. Um. You know, on a given week, maybe Chips might switch places with Medea Halloween for number three. <coughs> I don't know, maybe. But when I made this list, I was more so feeling Chips as the number two choice. Chips is why I went easy on Baywatch. Because Bay they're, they're kind of the same movie, but Baywatch wasn't as, as bad as this film. I saw this the same day I saw Power Rangers, because Lewis came in town. I brought Lewis in town for Power Rangers, and Chips was the first one of the two that we had that night. And Lewis is wearing a Power Rangers shirt, and uh, the guy working the tickets saw Linkara's uh, shirt and goes, huh. I figured you would have been at Power Rangers because I said two for chips, and then and then Lewis is like, Lewis is like, yeah, you fucking think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> he was having none of this fucking movie, and neither was I. This movie was, it's a, it was like Dax Dax Shepard wrote, directed, and stars on this film, and you can tell that okay, he wants to make a movie that's just an action comedy where they do a lot of motorcycle stunts, because doing motorcycle yeah. stunts is kind of his thing. Meanwhile, you probably have a studio that's like, all right, we need to really cynically write off the success of 21 Jump Street and that genre of, like, spoof reboot. So what do we have the rights to? All right, chips. Do something with chips. And it has nothing to fucking do with chips. Yeah. And, and that would be fine if it were at least funny. But it's it's a motorcycle cop movie that it, it just happens to be called Chips. And I'm like, th it's so easy to just take an old product like that and just add dick jokes to it. Oh, if, yeah. if you really want to impress me, take Chips and actually make something good out of it. Like, actually make something... That would impress me. It might not be. It, it, who knows? If you still did that, it might st it still might not be very good. But at least I'm like, okay, you tried. Yeah, like, like no, we're gonna make this a straight up fucking drama. <laughs> like, yeah, I would be impressed with yeah. that. Because it's e like, and don't get me wrong, I, I I did really like Twenty One Jump Street, but because of that, you're getting yeah. shit like this movie. And Baywatch wasn't great, but Baywatch at least had a level of ambition behind it that was not in this film. Right. Baywatch was trying to have some charisma to it, and some... Like, you could tell they, they probably thought they had another 21 Jump Street on their hands with Baywatch. Didn't quite reach yeah. that. But compared to this shit, which shouldn't have been in theaters, shouldn't have been made anyway, it's just... Gross. The movie is, it just stops to have tangents about rim jobs out of nowhere. It just that's, stops. That's, you know, and every once in a while that kind of that kind of comedy I, I enjoy, where it's just it's, like childish yeah. and he shoots sure. dicks and butts and like that. Sure, yeah. It can all be done, anything can be done well and funny in the right context. You're right. This movie had no context to it. It was just... We're going to start talking about rim jobs all of a sudden. Or we're going to stop this conversation so Michael Pena can stare at some lady's yoga pants for like five minutes. Or, I mean, they try to say like, man, you're a sexaholic. And so they try covering it up with that, but it doesn't go anywhere with that. And uh, it'll cut to just like a cat box because Dax Shepard yeah. doesn't like cat poop, which who does? So... It'll cut to just, like, a cat's ass for no reason. Shit like that. Just shit like, like doofy bro humor. That, that's mostly what the movie is. Or, like, you gotta move me to the bathroom. My leg hurts. But you're naked! And then his dick scrubs across his face. Like, it's 90 minutes of shit like that and uninteresting action sequences where you got Vincent D'Onofrio as the villain... But in scenes where he's got a motorcycle helmet on, they get an actor who's like 150 pounds lighter than he is. And it's not even meant as a joke. It's just a horrible goof that's in this movie. This movie pissed me off. 
Like this this movie pissed me off. Like I was angry watching this. It was it this is like unfunny anger I got that a lot of people got from the emoji movie. I was more angry at this film. And that's probably why it's number two above like Medea Halloween, because I was more pissed off at this film. I understand that. <laughs> um so speaking of the emoji movie. <laughs> I guess we should get to your number. Not one. even on my list. No, I would. That would floor me if that were the case. Like, did you watch it again and suddenly like it? No, the Emoji Movie is my number one. Yeah. What made this worse to you than Let There Be Light? Let There Be Light, I found frustrating on every level. Mm. It, like it did anger me, but the Emoji Movie for me was the worst movie of the year just based on how soul crushing and empty i found it mhm mm if that like no it does cuz say what you will about let there be light it was a passion project for kevin Starbuck. right Starbuck. right so you could tell someone cared about it and and the emoji movie it's all summed up based on who the main character is uh -huh. and it's a character who is the expression meh yeah like it's his aspiration is to be meh. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's just fucking... That sums up how I feel about emojis, period. I don't use them in text. I find it annoying when people use them in text to me. Mm -hmm. it, like, it, it, because to me, it is so much quicker and simpler and more to the point to actually fucking say something with words. And it's just indicative of everything I hate in culture right now was the emoji movie. It was indicative of everything I despise yeah. mm -hmm. about our generation and the generation younger than us. That movie that. was everything I hate. Mm -hmm. And and besides that, there was just no fucking effort put in. Like yeah. you said, it, it is a, such a ridiculous, horrible thing to base a movie off of. So if you're gonna fucking do it, Go balls to the wall because mm. there is an opportunity for that. Yeah. But instead, it's this sad sack universe that exists only in this one phone mm. where there's this hierarchy of used emojis. Uh -huh. And then, like, oh, we'll escape and we'll go to this app and we'll plug this app. And then Candy we'll plug... Crush! Yeah, and then we'll plug this app. And it's mm. just like, the fuck you, I don't. <laughs> you know what app I use the most on my phone? The fucking weather app. Yeah, but, dude, but, hell yeah. But here's the other thing. It was a fucking kids movie. Mm -hmm. and, and what I found, I think the most frustrating is, is uh, that movie was rated PG, probably. Probably just for the shit jokes alone. Right, yeah. right. But, but with the age group that really they should have been aiming at, they should have been going PG-13 or... Yeah. Like, if they had any fucking balls. Mm -hmm. and, and they could have fucking... Like, they tried half-assed to hint at it, but they could have put some fucking social commentary in there. About yeah. Fucking, like, I'm on my phone all the time. I'm not fucking blameless, but I mean... Oh, yeah, me too. I'm... But to me, I my phone's a... Tool. I don't fucking text the person who's sitting right fucking next oh, to me. Oh, no, yeah. Like, and I, I'm still one of those people, if I need to have a conversation that I know is going to take an hour over text, and it's going to take me 30 minutes on the phone, I still fucking call a person. Sure. And I hate it when someone's like, why'd you call me? Why did you text me? It's like, because this one's taken three fucking hours. <laughs> to, like, find out what time we're going to be in a place. I'll use, like, the smiley face, because sometimes I'm writing a sentence that might need that, because, other like... The same way that I would use something like LOL. Like, if, if, uh, if I am texting a motherfucker... Yeah. Like, basically, if I am friends enough with you to text you, mm -hmm. then you should know my fucking tone already. Sure. Yeah, and I don't remember... Yeah. I don't know if I ever send you, like, a smiley face or anything like that, but I probably do with, like, like my dad or, or, or something. Yeah. So if, if, like, an emphasis on a certain kind of tone needs to yeah. be there, like... I'll, I'll use it in that regard. I'm not putting in, like, anything else, really. Yeah. Um, 
Unless I'm uh, unless I'm on Laura's phone and Laura's like, hey, can you text this to my sister real quick? And then I do, and then I just put, put a bunch of random emojis in. Her sister writes back like, what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, I had a stroke. <laughs> and that's uh, like that that movie was it was just so fucking soul crushing to me. Everything about it, I found just just I felt like a hand tightening in my chest. And I remember, like, curling into a ball onto the seat. You were having me. none of this movie. It was just, it was just, <laughs> it was sad in a way that movies shouldn't be sad. Yeah. Because it wasn't trying to make me sad. It was just sad. Yeah, and it was anything that someone could, or, the movie's terrible, but in, in, anything about the movie where maybe someone would be like, okay, maybe that's a little clever, or that, no one's going to do that, but let's say they did. You've seen the same kind of plot point and story, really, in in movies like uh, Wreck-It Ralph or Inside Out, or... Uh, or anything that's better. Anything yeah, the that's Lego better. movie. Like, yeah, yeah, you've seen... It takes from... While it's promoting all of its, probably like Candy Crush and the music shit, like... And YouTube, but while it's doing that, like it's ripping off story points from all of these. Yeah. Like, there's way all these other way more su successful movies than the, than it is. Well, and and just in the end, such a shitty like fucking moral to throw out too. Like, <laughs> like it'll all be okay if you run away from your problems uh, and fucking like and, and the meh character becomes something else which is fine he becomes something else something new uh -huh. and he's elevated but at the same time the strong female character throughout the entire movie she just becomes a princess it wasn't even good with you're right it wasn't she even just good with its own princess. morals because it's like yeah oh you can be beyond what you're supposed to be meanwhile like she just becomes is, what she's supposed yeah. to be <laughs> exactly like he this male character like and i i am not like a super feminist by any means like i i, I I'm a feminist in, in all the ways that fucking make sense, but I'm not going to sit here and, like, generally speaking, I, I won't go into a rant about it. Like, I don't give a shit if a movie passes, though, what the bed shell test or whatever. Oh, right. <laughs> I don't care. Not every movie needs that. You uh -huh. know? It, it, everything in service of the story. But in this, it's just like, yeah, this male character, he could be anything you want to be, but you were born a princess. <laughs> So, so forget about being this interesting mm -hmm. alternative hacker character that stands on her own and does whatever. You're a princess. And isn't power more important than being yourself? <laughs> but also, it's a movie that's done... I, did Sony make this movie? Like, I don't know uh, who made this movie. It's, it also is a movie that doesn't even know how... For as much advertising as it's doing, it also doesn't know how phones work. No, yeah, exactly. Like, tr it thinks trolls live inside your phone. And... Uh, um, even when it's being deleted at the end, it's like this slow kind of wipe thing that it's doing yeah, that they have to stop. No, it's just, and, it's gone in a second, guys. And maybe if the, and it's like, okay, I understand, I don't, I don't think anyone who's writing this movie also thinks that's how phone works, but. You know what, but, they might. Or maybe you know, their maybe, sense of humor was so fucking inept. Maybe they do, but I, it's like, part of me is like, okay, I, for story reasons, all right, maybe you're doing this, but it's a terrible fucking movie. So no. that is just one thing on top of everything, everything else. Yeah, everything else that's terrible about. Yeah, this no, film. it was it, with all the other movies on my list, and, and and quite frankly, I'll say this about all the movies on my list last year. Like of all the things that I find hateful and offensive and horrible, and every of these Christian movies we see, mm -hmm. or boring and poorly made and a lot of the other things like honestly the emoji movie is right up there as being one of the worst things <laughs> i've ever fucking seen because it is that fucking just soulless like and and that's you know i love the occasional big budget action movie yeah something that does obviously exist to make money for something. sure but at the same time, I still like to go to the theater and, and hope in some way, and even in some of these bad movies, see a, a glimmer, mm. the, the slightest bit of 
the hint mm -hmm. of someone trying to make art. Mm -hmm. And there was just fucking... <laughs> No, even in terms of its animation, it was an ugly film to look at. Oh yeah, and and, and, and uh, like no one even had to fucking design anything. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, ah, uh, I. It's a movie that I completely agree with you about how soulless this movie is and and empty, like you said. Um, I was just never. For whatever reason, I don't know. I, I wasn't sitting there angry. While and watching. I wasn't and angry that, either. And that, well, you were. You had more of a reaction to it than I did. Yeah. Like I was. I was mostly sitting there bored through the movie, and, and you were sitting there tucked in a ball. And I think you kicked the seat a couple of times. Well, I, my passion for I it never hated it. <laughs> no, I, it's a terrible fucking movie. Easily one of the worst children's animated movies I've seen in in a long time. There were other kids' movies that I think annoyed me more than this or like pissed me off or more like the wildlife just off the top of my head uh this movie that came out last year called the what or the year before called the wildlife i remember being way more mad and annoyed at but at the well, same time it probably it, it wasn't as empty of a film as well the emoji and, and, movie. and that's kind of my problem with the emoji movie is even like the worst kids movie like that's something it is more ineptly made or or or, or, or more offensive or mm -hmm. or something that that gets that visceral reaction mm -hmm. out of the viewer even a terrible movie can get a, a reaction yeah the emoji movie was incapable of even that you had a pretty bad reaction had, to this movie had, but that was my thought process yeah it, it wasn't like oh i hated everything and this is uh -huh. annoying it wasn't annoying it was just james corden was very annoying in this film <laughs> no, remember, the, remember that they used the oh high, he used the high five yeah. or whatever but but that was the thing it was just like it was so devoid of anything mm -hmm. that that's where my anger came yeah. from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was my number one. Well, mine's Let There Be Light. Um, uh, we were close to matching up on something this year. Yeah, I thought Let There Be Light would probably... If I was to bet, like, I would... I would I probably would have bet Let There Be Light would have been I, your I number had to one. I had to internally debate it for a while. Today. I'm sure, and it, it doesn't, it's not like I'm shocked that Emoji was your number one. Like, I completely understand why that movie is anybody's number one choice. Um, Let There Be Light is a movie that you know what you're getting into when the movie opens with 9-11, and the movie has fucking nothing to do with 9-11. I forgot about 9-11. Remember, see? No, that's why they put it at the beginning of the movie, because you're not supposed to forget that shit. <laughs> Never forget, Dave. God damn it. I, I keep Kevin forgetting. Kevin Sorbo is doing you a favor. Yeah, I forgot about that, where the, like, just the, the, like, every terrorist attack that could possibly be blamed on someone of a faith other than Christianity got <laughs> in that quick clip show right in the beginning. I forgot about that. And just all the, that's right, the veiled, like, racism for well, the entire thing. Well, remember when he's, uh, and it's, it's like, okay, okay, if you want to talk about extremism and stuff like that, all right, but it was, it was out of place in this film, because yeah. it's, it's, this movie is being sold like it's this redemption story with this guy who's like this Richard Dawkins type atheist, and then he had, it's Jesus, bro, it's the same it is Jesus. Christ. It's, the, it's same, the same plot. Yeah, like so many similar things happen in both movies, but um, so it, it's that kind of come to Jesus film. And you've seen movies like this before. You've seen the atheist or the non-believer or the not very religious person like converts. Maybe something happens to them near death experience. Maybe they lose a loved one. Maybe they go to jail. Uh, maybe seen, they do some. Uh, investigative journalism or they do, yes they yeah. do investigative journalism but you have scenes in this movie where when kevin sorbo is getting remarried to his ex-wife in the movie and then this girl stands up during the wedding and is like i booked you on hannity and it's like oh fuck you too um, like this is my wedding you cunt <laughs> so they go on hannity and they're talking to sean hannity in this film and uh I don't know, Sean Hannity says something to him like, uh, uh, um, why is it that you want to 
bring all these people to your faith or something. And Kevin Sorbo's like, why does ISIS cut people's heads off? Like, <laughs> bro. Why? Why? <laughs> And, like, that, settle the fuck down. And, and every time that they say ISIS in this movie, you know, you just know, you get this taste in your mouth where you're like... That they just mean Muslims as a I whole. I know you said ISIS, but I don't even think it's Muslims. I think they just mean brown people. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, the movie is, it doesn't... If it wants to tackle something like extremism, it's just doing it in a very thin and shallow and forced way in this film. Way off just, on the side. To dude. just rile up the fan base that yeah. watches Hannity and is going to go see a movie like this. Um, and it just, just mixed in with everything else. Between the cancer subplot where the wife is acting like she farted and the kids who are, who are even more obnoxious than the worst America's Funniest Home Videos video. Just... The movie equivalent of just slamming pictures of kids in your face. Fuck, they're so bad. And they have just the worst kind of, like, Fuller House, like, one-liners jokes. Like, Dad, make sure you're back here with Mom by 11. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Like, <laughs> Like, I'm your father. I'll get my belt, boy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, it, it's a movie that... Like, ten minutes ago, I was an alcoholic. <laughs> I'll beat the shit out of you. All of the cliches of this kind of movie are in this film, right down to the playing basketball moment. That's true. Um, and... And at least our film was a parody. <laughs> it's it's a hateful little movie. And every time you have somebody like Kevin Sorbo in this movie talking about, you know, the, the virtues of being a Christian, what being like a loving Christian is, what whenever he's talking about something like this in the movie, it's I'm always, in, in the back of my head, I'm there's, like... There's like, two minutes ago, you said something that was very veiled and hateful. <laughs> or even like, motherfucker, I've seen your Twitter account. Yeah. I've, I've seen your fucking Twitter account where you're, I, I, I don't know, talking about your... A, a, two lesbians getting divorced and you're like, you're, you're saying shit like, uh, see? I'm like, Dude, what's it any of your fucking business, man? And like, he, he, between that and, uh, as I'm looking around the gym, I wonder, do liberals work out? I'm like, why are you staring at random people in the gym, Kevin Sorbo? Yeah. And, 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 hey, pot belly motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is, this is a movie made for, the this is a movie that's so hateful, and yet it's talking about... It's like a hateful fucking movie, talking about all of these topics, and, like, saying stuff about spreading God's love and spreading Christianity to humanity, while at the same time cheering on people being thrown to the lions. Yeah. Like, I I don't know. Like, it's, it, it, it's like saying you're a Christian, but saying, like, but having a King Herod sticker on your car. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, it was it was bad in the same way that stuff like God's Not Dead is. It's a little more focused than God's Not Dead, and that God's Not Dead was hateful about all kinds of different yeah. things because it was an ensemble film. So there's this storyline, this storyline, that storyline. This one's really just kind of focused on the shitty atheist or yeah. just br bringing in just an ISIS and, plot and, for no reason, but... Yeah, and I'm an atheist, and I'll say, there's not much worse than a shitty atheist. But I'll Oh, yeah, I've seen shitty atheists, yeah. Like, they exist. Mm -hmm. Like, they do exist, and they are awful. Any conversation you have that starts with, well, you seem like an intelligent person. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to smack that guy, too. Yeah. I really do. Uh -huh. Like, you believe what you want to believe as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. Mm -hmm. and, and that goes for atheists, too. Yeah. It, like, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, it's fine. But it's just black and white, like all yeah. of these movies are. Like, yeah. they, they are straw man films. And when they're trying to be funny, they're not. They're unfunny in a way of, like, the worst, like, TGIF show from the 90s. And you have characters in it that are just stereotypes, like, uh, uh, what's his name from uh, The Fugitive, uh, who's playing, like, his agent... Who says, oh, yeah. darling, every other word, yet they still make him straight, because that's the kind of movie this yeah. is. Like, okay, sure, why not? Let's say this character's straight. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you know what that, what that was? It was like, 
oh, let's, we'll take a jab at media people. We'll take a quiet jab at homosexuals. Just make a conversion movie. Like, it's not hard. You can make, you can make a move, you can make a movie about this character who has his come to Jesus moment. You can do that without being a prick. In fact, you should do it without being a prick. Because now you just look like an asshole. And we did it while being pricks, but the point for us was to be pricks. And we still and we still managed to have an, act, an actual like, kind of uplifting story towards the end of the film while using cliches that this movie is putting forward. It was just bad. It was... Be like, Kevin Sorbo was fine in the movie. Everyone else in this movie's terrible. The movie's horribly written, horribly edited. The comedy in it is just fucking dreadful. It, and when your climax has to do with your heroes going on something like Hannity... Yeah. You've lost the argument. I'm like, yeah, honestly... You have. Like, I, I, I've seen this guy argue the worst possible things in humanity because maybe it has to do with something that's on his side. Even if that one person he's defending is probably a fucking diddler. Yeah. I've seen this guy suck that dick. And to have that as, like, this yeah. kind of moral compass here... Honestly, is saying something about how bad this movie is because he is not the worst part of this film. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, uh... it's a terrible movie. Like it has its audience, but its audience deserves better than this. Its audience deserves a movie, a kind of conversion movie. If that's what you want to do, it deserves a kind of movie that's not there just to rile you up and like make you hate some kind of yeah. enemy whether it's atheism or whether it's something else it's just a gotcha movie it's just a yeah oh and that, and that's the other thing it's like what's the point of a fucking conversion movie where the main character converts like y you know the idea like in their brain they're like in this movie i'll show people the path of christianity but all it does is entrench deeper the people that are already there with you like it's it's Mm -hmm. It's not proving anything to anybody except for the people that already believe what you believe. Sure, I mean, but even that could, it could be done better than in oh. a movie. It could be done better than a movie like this. Um, and, and I've I've seen it done better. There were some yeah. movies in the '70s that came out that would okay. do something like this uh, that were at least better made than yeah. this film and better acted. Um, it's it's bad for the same reason as something like God's Not Dead. It's not so much that it's trying to put out this message to promote Christianity. It's it's being put out there to it's just... It's the we're Christians, fuck you thing. Yeah, it's another yeah. persecution complex movie. It's it's another victim fetishing move, fetishizing movie where they have to be the minority. They have to be the victims. Everyone's against them. Like, it's another one of those. It's it's a persecution film, and it's it's one where it wants to give the audience an enemy. Even if it's got to be as stereotypical and black and white as you can come up with. It's it's one of those movies that's just made, like Hillary's America, or like God's Not Dead, or Voiceless, or movies like that. Just a movie that's made to kind of bring out the worst in yeah. people. And I've seen movies do it more hateful than this film, like God's Not Dead, or especially Voiceless, or like The Life Zone, or something like that. But it's still there. It's still yeah. there in this film. And it's just gross when you think about it. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't disagree. Mm -mm. At all. It, it, hey, it was my number two. <laughs> all right, what's your negative one? <laughs> 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 Jesus, bro. <laughs> Ryan Mitchell, God bless you. You tried, but <laughs> <laughs> that cast. What the fuck? What was with that fucking cast, man? Your number one is a tie between Jesus, bro, and Disco. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't uh, watch disco. You hate disco music. Why would you watch that? Well, I'll be fucked if I'm going to be a patron. <laughs> I sent Sarah a copy of the movie. <laughs> she was in it. <laughs> she was in it. She knows how this movie oh, is. Oh, wait, I'm in it. Oh, yeah, you're in it. That's right. <laughs> Just watch your scenes. <laughs> ah. All right, so we'll be coming up. Uh, 
Brian's gonna be gone for a few weeks, but uh, so you won't have a video with Sarah and, Sarah and Brian. But I'm gonna sit in on Sarah's video with her when she does her list, and I think we're recording that tomorrow. So that'll be coming up here pretty soon. All right. I hope you enjoyed our annual rant about some shitty movies. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks for watching.